and welcome to Tonic Studios. I'm Leo and I'm here today to show you how to assemble the Buzzing Beehive House Gift Box die set. A huge name for an absolutely gorgeous die set. So this is a really simple one to assemble and I'm going to show you how that we've done this in layers because I think that's going to be the easiest way to explain it for you. So I'm going to start with my base layer. This is the bit that's going to go on the bottom of my beehive. And for that I have cut all of my pieces in navy. So I'm going to pull in the die set just so I can show you which pieces I'm using for each layer as we go along. So if I bring this in to the side, so I have first of all the actual base which is the largest of these dies over on this piece. I've then got my two side panels, so you'll notice that one has a notch in and one doesn't. And the easiest way to find the matching um, sets of these, and I know I think Karen and Alison have probably told you this already, is to look for the matching patterns. So you can see I've got two matching patterns here, so that's where these two pieces have come from. So those are our base pieces. I have also a second base and then a second set of each of those as well, because obviously we need four to make the sides of our box. So let's go through together and put this layer of our beehive together. So first of all, as with any 3D project, we're going to want to fold along our score lines. And there are a couple to pay attention to here. On this one, it's probably easy to show you. So this is going to be a glue tab, this is a glue tab, and this is a glue tab. But you will notice that we do also have a score line along here. This one isn't to fold. We actually leave that one straight. This is kind of your marker line to show where the box above it sits on top. So you don't actually need to fold that one at all. So just fold this little blue tab on the end, but leave this line unfolded. I'm just going to repeat that then on this one. So fold in the two side glue tabs and the base like so, and we leave this long one as it is. And then I'm going to start sticking these together. So bringing in my deluxe adhesive, of course, I have found that the easiest way to do this is to put all of your pieces together in a line, form it into um, your sort of rectangle, put a base inside and then another one underneath just to stabilize it. So I'm gonna pop some glue onto this glue tab first of all. And then I'm gonna bring in the next side of my beehive and line that up. So what you're looking to line up here, if I can move this ever so slightly. So we're looking to line up the two points here at the bottom. And you should find that these two score lines also meet towards the top. So just make sure that your cut edge runs right the way along your score line where your glue tab is so you don't have any gaps there. Give that a few seconds to dry and then you'll see this starts to give us the shape of our beehive. I'm going to leave the tab on the top until the end. So then I've got a long piece and a short piece so the next one I need to add on is going to be a long piece. Now if you do um, glue yours together using this method make sure that you are alternating your pieces. You don't want two short sides together. Uh, that's definitely not going to form the beehive that we're looking for. So again, I'm just lining up my cut edge with my score line, making sure those points meet, making sure the top score lines meet here. Hold it then in place just for a few seconds while the glue grabs. One of the reasons that we love using a deluxe is that it grabs nice and quickly for us. And then my last piece is gonna go on, so again, glue onto that glue tab, line up my point and my score line. There we go, hold that in place for a moment for that glue to grab. Okay, now that we have those four sides together, we can join the last one. And you can see already that our little beehive is starting to take shape here. So a bit of glue onto here. Join that up in exactly the same way. So point to point, score line to score line, right along the edge. Just if you've got any excess glue, just give it a quick wipe while it's still wet, it's the best way to get rid of it. Okay, 
So now that we have the main shape sorted, I'm gonna actually get my base put in so that can start drying as well. And you're gonna to wanna to do this from the underside because obviously, I don't know if you can see, hopefully, that this is actually getting narrower towards the top. You're not gonna to have to push the base in from the top in the way that we normally would. So just peel up your glue tabs pop one of your bases in, make sure I've used our classic card here, so I've got obviously the weave texture, so I want it weave texture inside. So pop this in under your glue tabs, and then just run glue either along the glue tab or around the edge of the um, base, whichever you find easier. So I'm literally just gonna run a little bit of glue along the edge of the base piece that I've cut here. So literally just inside there, hopefully you can see that. And this side. And then that's the last one. Flip the glue tabs over, but then basically press this down onto your surface and push the base into the glue tabs. You're going to need to give it a few seconds again just for that glue to grab. Depending on the type of glue you're using, you may need to give it a few seconds longer. It might help um, if you use one of our precision glide folders or if you have a bone folder or something like that. You can actually get right into the corners then. Really press that base down onto the glue tabs. Make sure you've got a nice firm grab there. Everything is nice and square. Perfect, okay, that one has stuck. So you can see that all of my glue tabs are now stuck to my base. And then in order to neaten this up, like I said, I have cut a second base. So I'm just gonna run glue all the way around the edge and across the middle. And then add my second base over the top just to lock in those glue tabs, hide all of my workings. You know, we like to uh, hide what we've been doing so no one can see how this has been made and leave people guessing. Here we go, and again, flip it over, give it a good press all the way over the surface. Okay, now this part, like I said, this is kind of coming up at an angle, but then the top is going to go straight. So it is it doesn't follow the same angle as the side. You want it to be coming up straight because obviously the next layer is gonna sit over the top of this. So this is why these glue tabs are slightly at a separate level to the rest of it. So all I'm gonna do is pull the glue tab back on the inside, pop a little bit of glue onto the tab, just like that. And then I want to really look at this from the outside and make sure that I have a nice straight edge on here. So what you should end up with, if I pull it this way, you've got your slope and then it changes angle to go upwards like that. And I'm gonna do that all the way around this box. So pull the tab back, pop some glue onto it, flip it over and just make sure that you're pulling the score line where you've got that fold and then your cut edge, make sure you're pulling them to perfectly meet because that will mean then that you do have the right angle for the top of the box. And the next one. Again, just making sure that my folded edge and my cut edge meet nicely along there. And then the last one. Okay, so that is the base of my beehive done. I'm gonna pop this to one side while we move on to the next layer. So again, I'm gonna bring my dies back in so I can show you where the next layer pieces have come from. Now hopefully making this in different colors is gonna help you. Um, if you need to stop the video at any time, pause, kind of take a screenshot or anything so you can check where all of your dies are, um, please feel free to do so. So next layer, then we're doing the middle layer. And for this one, the pattern that we're looking at is this one that has the little sort of um, raised beads on here. So you can see there's that piece and there's that one. 
And this time then we have these extra pieces as well. So these are what is going to form the collar that is going to sit over the next layer down. Now there are quite similar sized pieces on here. Um, my dies are exactly as they come in the packaging so that I can show you exactly where each layer comes from. So for this layer, the middle layer, you want the longest one and the one next to it, just like that. So the two side panels are the ones that are next to each other and the two collar panels are also the ones that are next to each other. I then also have another two bases and this is going to be the middle of the bases that are in this part here. And the assembly this time is exactly the same um, as the bottom layer. So move my dies back to the side. I'm going to bring in my side pieces and again I'm just going to fold those additional score lines, so just the two glue tabs down the side and across the base. And the same with the smaller piece, just like that. And I've already done that with my other two panels. And I'm going to assemble this in exactly the same way as I did with the base. So start with the long side, pop some glue onto the long glue tab on the side, line up the point for the bottom and the score line there for the top. I don't know why, but I can find it easier <laughs> to look at it from this direction than the other way around. There we go. So I can see that my fold line and my cut edge are nicely lined up there. And then we shall keep adding on. So I've got a short side, so I need to make sure I add now a long side. Popping this in, so again, making sure our points are meeting at the bottom. That's going to obviously form the base of your box. You want to make sure they meet, you don't have any gaps there. And your score lines at the top are nice and even as well. And then a long panel, so I need to add the short one under here. There we go. Last one going in. Okay, bring them all together then to form the middle layer of your beehive. And other than the cutting, I am doing most of this for you in real time, so hopefully um, this shows you exactly how easy and quick this is to put together. I think these are a really visually striking gift box, um, but super quick and easy to put together, which is always a winner in my book. If I need a quick gift for someone, having a uh, gift box that looks really detailed and with uh, lots of decoration but is actually nice and easy to assemble, it's always one that I'm going to reach for. So again, now that I have my box formed, I'm going to put my base inside. So again, I'm using classic cards, so I've got the weave texture and I want that to be on the inside. So I'm going to pop that in. Run some glue just around the edge where the glue tabs are going to sit. Like I say, you can do it this way or if you want to just run the glue along the actual glue tabs themselves, you can certainly do it that way, whichever you find easiest. And we give you um, tips and hints, but we all craft differently and uh, the way that I assemble this is probably different to the way that Karen assembles it and different to the way that Alison assembles it. We all have our own ways of working. Again, I'm just going to fold my glue tabs over and then literally just press this all down onto my surface, holding my box kind of in all four corners and just pressing the base down so those glue tabs grab just like that. Okay, now this time I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do the top tabs. So exactly where, yeah, exactly the same, sorry, as we did for the base. Pull the tab back, dot of glue on there. And again, you want to make sure that you're kind of pulling the top so that you have that slightly different angle. 
So you've got the slope coming up and then it changes angle and goes straight up from there. I don't know exactly what angles they are, but they are definitely different angles. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And again. And then last one. So I'm going to pop that to one side and I'm going to bring back in then I've got my second base and then I also have the collar pieces that we mentioned. These are what is going to sit over the top of the base layer to let your little beehive stack. So again I'm just going to fold on all of my score lines for these. All the way around. So I've got two longer ones, two shorter ones and I'm going to join these again making sure that you're doing a short one, a long one, short one, long one. Don't end up with uh, two long ones together. When we were making the samples for packaging, that is something that I ended up doing by accident. So uh, learn from my mistakes, don't do what I did. So these are nice and simple to put together, just nice, easy, right angle. So I have a short one, long one, let's get a short one there. Last one will be going on. This is where we find out if I have definitely got them all in the right order. Do I definitely have a rectangle or do I have some kind of uh, rhombus shape instead? I think I'm okay. I think I have a rectangle. Okay. Yep, that looks right. Whew, did it. Last one then, just to join them up. Okay, so there is the little collar piece that's going to go under this layer. Oh, didn't hold that for quite long enough apparently. Note to self. So what I'm going to do then is put this base inside of here and then glue the two together. So we're going to hide all of our workings for this. I absolutely love it when I can hide as many glue tabs as possible on a gift box. Like I say, keep people guessing as to uh, how you've made something. Don't want to give away all of your crafty secrets, do you? So, a bit of glue on each of these glue tabs. Pop the base inside. And press it down. making sure that it's nicely meeting on all of the edges. Perfect. Give it a good smooth if you want to go in with your bone folder or your precision glide folder. Now is the time. So now what we have is a nice flat surface here and a nice flat surface here and we can literally just join the two together. So glue around the edge. I don't want to have any sort of gaps around the edge of the gift box. Good bit of glue across the middle. And then we just fit the two together. So make sure that you've got your sides nicely lining up. And then you want to just gently press from the inside and press the two layers together all the way around. like that and go across the middle make sure you've got a nice bond across there as well so there is the second layer and we do have on this one you can see we've got a little hole and there is also a teeny tiny little slit in the cardboard here um, now this is to put in the pieces that are going to join your two layers together so I have cut these 
out of some of our Luna Silver Pearl cardstock here. Now because this is pearl and for speed I am using some red liner tape, don't worry. I'm not only using tape, as we all know, Alison does say no tape. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my little piece in through the slit from the outside, like so. So you want the rounded edge at the bottom, you want your glue tab to be on the inside of the box. Now that I have safely fed that through, I'm going to rip the liner off my red liner tape. And uh, the reason I've done this is just because I am gluing um, pearlescent cardstock. Obviously, it does take a, a few moments longer for that to grab. But to kind of double duty this, underneath where my tape is, I'm also going to add a little bit of glue. So I've got the instant grab of the tape, but the longevity of the wet glue then. So once you've done that, you just pull this back through until the score line on the tab. And if I show you on this one, hopefully you can see it. There's a little score line here. You want to line that score line up with the inside of the slit on the box. So just keep pulling until that's in place. Pull the tab then flat down and press it into place. So my score line is literally sitting right along where that slit is. Hopefully that has explained it, but we're going to do it again so you can see it from the other side. So taking my little tab, I'm going to slide it in through the slit on the side of my base. I'm going to rip off the red liner tape. Obviously if you're gluing this, you don't have to worry quite so much about which direction it goes in from. A bit of glue just under my tape. Do some double duty. Pull the tab back through until we get to the right place. And I would recommend that you pull the tab um, at a 90 degree angle to the box so that you know that your glue isn't touching anything until it's definitely in the right place. Once you're happy that the score line is along the slit, at that point then you kind of fold it down flat alongside the box and then press the glue into place on the inside. And I can see that my base hasn't quite grabbed, so I'm just gonna pinch that for a second as well. So there is the central or middle layer of our beehive done. This is then going to sit over the top of your base and I'm just gonna tuck my little tab in on that side. Same on this side, just tuck it in and slot it on. So there you go, we can see now that is starting to come together. I'm gonna pop this to one side then, bring my dies back in for the top layer. So going with a slightly lighter color again, hopefully you're appreciating this uh, ombre look. I thought this might be the easiest way so you'd be able to see exactly where all of the dies were that go for each layer. So again, I have two bases. This is the smallest one this time on our set of bases. We again have our side panels. So this time we're looking at this pattern. Um, so you've got the sort of half honeycomb, if you like. Um, so we have the longer piece and the shorter piece there. And then for the sidebars, these two are fairly similar in size. You can see there's really not a lot in it, but it is going to be the top and the bottom on this side for you. So if you were going to screenshot anything from this for the instructions, this is what I would probably take away from each of these. So let's get this assembled and you've guessed it, it's exactly the same as the other two layers. We are going to fold our score lines first on our side pieces. So the long one for the bottom, the long one and the short one for the side. Same again on this one. And then we're going to assemble them into a nice long chain. So glue on my glue tab. Make sure I've got this nicely lined up. So again, I'm looking to make sure that my points are at the same place at the bottom. My score line meets at the top. And then on to the next one. So I've got a long one, a short one, need another long one. The other easy way to make sure you have the right ones is that the end two will have the slit in them, the side two will not. 
as long as you have the uh, sides that are the same opposite each other, then uh, you're winning. You're definitely doing it right. Okay, so again, making sure everything is nicely lined up. Last one going on to the chain. One thing I would recommend with this, make sure that you do get glue right down to the corner of your glue tab. Um, if you don't have glue right down to the corner, then you're going to end up with it slightly bagging on the finish box. Um, so for that nice crisp finish, make sure that you are spreading your adhesive right the way over that glue tab. And again, just making sure my two corners are meeting nicely there, no gap. My score line is meeting at the top and then just pinching my glue tab just for a second while the glue grabs for me. And then we'll bring it all together on the last one. Almost done. And I mean, how long have we been going? Maybe 10 minutes at this point. And we've almost assembled our little beehive. I assume it's 10 minutes. It feels like 10 minutes. Let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe it's been half an hour and I've just been a little crafty days and not noticed. Okay, so there we go. There is the top layer of our little beehive done. Again, I'm gonna flip it over, peel back my glue tabs, pop my base inside, weave texture down. Run some glue along the edges. And you can see that I have made this out of our classic cardstock, um, so our 216 GSM. Because it is a fairly small, um, simple shaped box, so it's just a nice little rectangle, it is definitely sturdy enough in our classic cardstock. And certainly once you were to start adding layers of decoration onto the outside, that would be absolutely fine, no problem at all. It would be more than sturdy enough. So, pop it down, hold the corners, and then just press the base down onto those glue tabs, making sure everything's nice and square. Everything is firmly stuck all the way into the corners. Give it a good press all over. And then again, I'm just gonna run around the top for that little cap. And this time, this cap is going to be for our roof. So these are the three layers. So if you were making um, just a little house or you wanted just a two layer beehive, you would make the top layer and the middle layer. If you want all three, obviously you do top, middle and bottom. If you just want a little one layer, um, a house or hive, you could absolutely do that too, in which case you would just make the roof and the very top layer. These are a really lovely sized um, gift box, and especially if you make all three layers. I think there's a lot of different little gifts that you could put in here. Um, I think Karen and Alison mentioned things like um, some honey themed um, toiletries and kind of beauty products, and lip balm and soap and maybe a hand cream, things like that. If you've got someone who is a gardener in your life, um, you could do a little sort of um, set of seeds perhaps, and then some gardener's soap. You know, the kind that helps to get all the soil and stuff. It's got that slightly gritty texture in the soap, uh, just to really clean your hands after a day in the garden. Um, maybe again, some little hand cream or something. And that would be a lovely little gift for someone who enjoys their garden. Or if it is for someone who has just bought their first house maybe, or they've moved house, you make a little house gift box. Um, perhaps you could give them some seeds to grow a little house plant or something like that. Very traditional housewarming gift, a nice little house plant. So there we go. Top layer is done. I'm going to do then my collar that's gonna sit underneath. So exactly like I did with the last one, fold and burnish in those score lines. And my little glue tabs on the end. So let me make sure I've got two long ones, two short ones. Let's put them in order so I make sure I definitely glue them together in the right way. I know you love to see a blooper, but we don't need that today. So make sure everything is nicely together at the right angle. 
with your glue tabs. Quick pinch just to grab nicely and move along again to the next one. Okay, that's that one done and the next. So what kind of ideas have you got for this little gift box? I hope you have lots. I hope the inspiration is flowing already for you. I absolutely adore the little flowers that are in this die set and uh, the ones that we did for packaging and then um, we actually, so we made the original three obviously to go on the packaging for your dies but then we made an extra two um, to go into the magazine um, and one of those is absolutely covered in flowers so we spent a day just die cutting flowers and shaping them all and doing little drops to the center and uh, yeah they go all the way up over the the walls and over the roof of the little house you can definitely go to town with the decorations in this set so perfect i do actually have a rectangle not some kind of weird rhombus shape go me i've managed it twice in a row now flip this over i'm going to grab some glue again onto my glue tabs just inside here all the way around Take my second base piece and drop it in. There we go. Smooth that all down. Make sure it's all nicely pressed into the corners. Give it a good press all the way around. And then we have again flat surface, flat surface, and we're just going to join them together. Again, making sure it's actually in shot. Trying not to craft up close. Not the easiest of things to do. We all, I think, when we're crafting, pull things closer to our faces so we can see what we're doing. Double check, we've got everything right. Okay, there we go. Make sure it's all nicely lined up across the base and then just pinch. So I'm just going in with my thumbs and then my fingers underneath and just pinching from the inside and the outside. You don't really want to set this down and press because obviously you've got this collar, you don't want to press that or bend it. So just push the actual two base pieces together. Especially around the edge, so you don't want any gaps along here. Make sure you've got good adhesion all the way around. Once you're happy with that then, like I said, just press across the middle, make sure that's all done. And there is the top layer of our beehive. So again, I have another two of the little silver tabs that I'm gonna pop on the inside and I'm gonna do this in exactly the same way as I did for the middle layer. Just poke that through, pull the tape, she says. <laughs> Sometimes easier said than done. Pull the tape off my red liner in here. Here we go. If I can just grab the edge. There it is. A little bit of glue next to it. So I've got instant grab and then longevity. Pull the tab through until I am happy that the score line is in the right place. And then bend it down so that it is flat against the side and press that adhesive into place. Flip it around and do exactly the same on the other side. So poke the tab in. The reason that I put the tab in from the outside, once I can get this one past the red liner tape, is because I want it to sit flat this way. I don't want it to be, I want the, I'm trying to think how to explain this now. So I want this slit to be flush over the top. Um, I think sometimes if you push it in from the inside, depending on how you do it, you might find it a bit difficult to pull it down um, and you might bend this slightly. So I've just found this the easiest way to do this. Okay, last bit of red liner tape for here. Just grab that backing. You can tell we don't use tape often. I'm definitely not as skilled as uh, Jodie, for example. She just rips this stuff off 
that kind of thing. Okay, there we go. Bit of glue underneath. And then again, I'm just gonna pull this through until the score line meets where that slit is. Put it flat down against the box and press the top of the tab. So I'm literally just pressing on the inside, just pressing where I've got that adhesive onto the inside of my box. So again, to build this, I'm gonna pop that into here, sit it down, flip it over, and push that tab in on that side. And there we go. So you can see my little blue ombre beehive is nicely coming together. So now we need to do the roof. I'm gonna pull my dies back in for the last time where we have a look at the roof pieces this time. So a couple of pieces that we have here. I've got the actual roof panel, which is this die over here. You can tell us it's got the score line across the middle for your ridge beam. I've got the two gable ends, which are this die here. And so you've got obviously glue tabs all around and then your little gable end. And then this time for the collar, you want the one that doesn't have any glue tabs on the end. Because if you notice, you've got two glue tabs on the end of the gables instead. So that is where the pieces are for your roof. Let's put it together. So exactly the same, I have gone in, burnished and folded, or folded and burnished all of my score lines. Just need to do my last piece for this bit of the collar. So pinch that along there. And then we're going to join it together. So we're gonna take one of the gable ends and I am going to, just using this glue tab on the side, join that to the side piece, like so. Again, I'm making sure that your score line and your cut edge nicely line up. Give it a few seconds for that glue to grab. I've just realized I've actually done something you shouldn't have done here. So again, this is going to be a learn from my mistakes. This score line is exactly the same as the ones at the top. You actually don't need to fold this one. So this one should be straight. My mistake. Okay, other side then of this gable end, I'm gonna put some glue onto there and add on my other collar piece. There we go, and that. And then I'm going to join the last gable end piece to the ends of both of the collar pieces. Again, making sure that your fold line, where your score line is, and your cut edge nicely line up. Last one going in. So this is the structure for your roof. And again, this is now gonna sit over the top layer of our beehive as well. Once you're happy that is all adhered, we are then going to bend in these glue tabs and also then bring slightly up these ones. So there's our roof structure. I've got my roof panel. I'm going to fold it down the score line across the center and I'm gonna put glue all the way across here and here and across here and here. So at this point, you're going to want to put your roof down over your structure, or if it's easier, you can do it from the underside as well. Making sure that your point meets at the top. Hopefully this will make sense as I do it rather than what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna make sure that my line is nice and straight. Pop that down and then pull this along here making sure that the top point, so where your, the point here on this gable end that should meet the score line 
in the top of your roof piece. So long as it does, you're in the right place. So pop those in, hold them in place for a second while they bond, and then I'm gonna flip it over and pull it straight on the other side. Making sure then that my gable end fits nicely into there so you should have a nice even line all the way around. Doesn't matter if you're slightly over, I think I might have a bit more on this side than I do on this side, but it doesn't matter, it's absolutely fine. Then I'm gonna pull these two glue tabs back and just run some glue under them and put them in place. If you want to add glue um, and put all four pieces down at the same time, you absolutely can. If you find that easier, then you go right ahead. Again, this is all down to your personal crafting style and however you find this easiest. I don't think I've built any two of these in exactly the same way. So uh, no doubt as you're going along, you will find easier ways of doing this as well. The more you make, the quicker you'll be. Okay, last glue tab. Just gonna run some glue along there. Pop that down into place. Just hold it for a few seconds while my glue grabs. And then that is the little roof piece. It's going to sit just on top of my beehive like so. So there is my lovely little ombre beehive. But it's sat on the floor at the moment and I kind of wanted it to be up a little bit. So I have got some feet. So again, if I just bring in my little die set, you can see this die that we have here cuts out the piece that you need for your little feet that your house or your beehive can stand on. Again, I've done this in our lovely um, Luna Silver pearlescent card. So I have gone with the red liner tape for this. So I'm just gonna peel off the backing. She says, easier said than done. One thing I have learned is that if you um, just run over the tape with your nail first, it does then, she says, become easier to peel it up. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna fold our glue tab and pull the sides down. So again, you're making sure that your um, score line meets your cut line. Nice 90 degree angle there. And we're gonna do that all the way around. So grab off the tape backing. I don't know what's worse, watching me trying to peel off the backing of red liner tape or holding pearlescent card while, it, uh, while the glue grabs. Let me know, which would you prefer? <laughs> is this actually any quicker? I think it probably is. Okay, two more to go. Pull the glue tab back and just pull the side piece down. The one problem with red liner tape is you end up with little pieces everywhere and they have this amazing static magnetism, all of their very own. And it doesn't matter how well you think you've brushed yourself down, you'll probably find some maybe on your sleeve, attached to the front of your dress. Littered all over the craft room floor, absolutely. There we go. So, there are my four little feet. So, I'm going to grab my base. Oh dear, it's on a bit of a wonk now. I um, grab my glue, pop some glue onto here. And I'm just going to set these ever so slightly in from the edge. There you go, look, a little piece of red liner tape backing found itself in there as well. So um, yeah, just pulled it slightly in. You can use the um, deboss line. So around the edge where obviously the metal for your die sits, there is a little line that it puts um, onto your cardstock. So that might be a good guideline for you um, if you want to make sure these are all nicely lined up. It's a good top tip for you there. Okay, two more. Because I'm gluing the pearlescent card to a lovely classic card, hopefully this will grab relatively quickly. Fingers crossed that the feet don't all fall off as soon as I turn this over. Okay, there we go. So, four little feet on the base 
And I'm going to pop my tabs back in. So again, put your tab in on one side and then poke it in on the other side as you set it down. And there is my finished little ombre beehive. Now the very last thing that I wanted to show you was how I have put the little bees on the acetate strips that I have here. So it actually looks like I have little bees flying around my hive and this is actually really, really simple to do. So I have cut myself some little bees. I'm just gonna pull them in here so you can see them. And we have two dies that are gonna form your bees. So you've got the kind of full bee here and then you've got the little bee body as well. So you can cut them in two different colors. You can do the outer in black and the center in yellow. I've gone with navy and um, buttermilk today. A slightly different uh, bee coloring, I'm sure you'll agree. But it kind of goes with the theme of my little beehive. So I've already glued two together. I'm gonna to take one of the full bee pieces and one of my little bee bodies. If I flip this over, I'm gonna put some liquid glue. I've switched to my uh, precision nozzle for this one. We've got some very fine little lines here. And I'm just putting glue around the center of the bee. Grab the little bee body. And I'm gonna pop that into place. So you'll notice that the um, antenna overlaps. So it's a really good way to make sure you've definitely got this lined up correctly. Make sure they are nicely aligned. So there is my little bee. And you'll notice that I do have three more little bee bodies. They're gonna be very important in just a second. So I have cut myself a very thin strip. Hopefully you can actually see this little piece of acetate, there we go, that I have here. Now, this is just a piece of our um, packaging acetate, so the one that comes like over the front of your die sometimes. So it's nice and flimsy. You want definitely a flexible piece of acetate for this. I'm going to take my precision glide folder, or if you have a bone folder, that would work too. And I'm gonna give this a little bit of a curve. Doesn't need too much. Just run it like you used to do with um, curling ribbon. So probably that was a little bit too much. I was a little bit too aggressive there while I was trying to show you what I was doing. Um, but yeah, you just want a little bit of a natural kind of curve to it. There we go, we can make this work. Okay, so I'm gonna take my piece of acetate. I'm going to grab one of my little bees. So I'm gonna start at this end. I'm gonna take my little bee Put some glue onto the back. I'm gonna sit that onto my acetate. So, turn this over. I've got my acetate and my little bee. I'm then gonna put glue over the rest of the bee around and over the acetate. And I'm going to sandwich then the acetate between the two little bee bodies. And this is going to give you that little bit of extra anchor onto the acetate, because you've got cardstock glued to cardstock, so you don't have the plastic with your acetate in the middle. So my little bee is then anchored onto the acetate. And you'll notice that I didn't glue the wings, so if you wanted to add a little bit of movement you can just pop your nail at the edge and pull the wing up like so. So you can kind of separate the wings. Hopefully you can see that. Do the same on the other side. So all I do is I put my nail along the line where I want it to bend, give it a bit of support and then just pull up against it. So then my little bee has its little fluttery wings just like so. And then I would just add as many little bees along my piece of acetate as I want. Snip it then to length and glue this to your little beehive. And it will look like you have bees kind of dancing and buzzing all the way around your beehive. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little demonstration on how to assemble your brand new showcase, our buzzing beehive house gift box die set. Thanks and happy crafting.